Hello, my name is Carla Krocek, and this is my final project presentation for Models of Teaching ED 513 Masters of Science program through Franciscan University, Steubenville, Ohio. For my project, I have chosen Marzano and Brown's design questions for the art and science of teaching. This presentation is designed for Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School teacher guides, as I will show how you the teacher guide can effectively create a brain-based compatible classroom while following selected design questions from Marzano and Brown's instructional model I will show how you can incorporate five research-based strategies for an optimal learning environment what are the characteristics of a brain compatible classroom in the brain-based compatible classroom there will be an absence of threat an active learning environment an enriched learning environment providing of immediate feedback, meaningful content, choice, and multiple intelligences to address all learning styles and adequate time provided for the learner to observe the lesson. Harold Gardner's eight multiple learning intelligences aligns with brain-based learning to include learning styles such as the visual and kinesthetic learner. The life guidelines by which the teacher guide operates will include mutual respect, trustworthiness, active and empathetic listening, appreciation, a positive climate, be encouraging and supportive. The learning climate of the brain compatible classroom will encourage risk taking, provide encouragement, display cooperation, and be one of openness and belonging. First, let's learn how you can create a brain based learning environment for your child. As the teacher guide, you can incorporate these brain-based strategies within the following curriculums offered through PA Cyber Charter School, Calvert, Little Lincoln, and Lincoln Interactive. You, as the teacher guide, will follow the prepared lesson of the curriculum you have chosen, and you, as the teacher guide, will teach this lesson in a brain-compatible learning environment. I will use four selected questions from the design questions model Marzano and Brown for this presentation, along with five selected research-based instructional strategies from Classroom Instruction That Works, research-based strategies for increasing student achievement, Marzano, Pickering, and Pollock. The following strategies will be incorporated. Setting objectives and providing feedback, non-linguistic representations, cues, questions, and advanced organizers, homework and practice, and reinforcing effort and providing recognition. Design question number one. What is the teacher guide doing to establish and communicate learning goals, track student progress, and celebrate success? The instructional strategy you, as the teacher guide, will use. Setting objectives and providing feedback. Clearly express to the student what the learning goal is. This you will find listed in your lesson as the lesson objective or learning goal. Use sentence stems to help your child set learning goals. Use a rubric for setting objectives to help assess student learning. For younger students, simplify the wording of the rubric. As teacher guide, it is imperative to clearly express to the student what the learning goal of the lesson is. One effective way to help your students set their own learning goals is by the use of sentence stems. Here is an example of a sentence stem for use in a fifth grade social studies lesson. As you can see, the teacher guide sets the learning goal for the lesson or unit. In this example, understanding the basic purpose of government in the United States. Next, the student completes the following sentences. I know one purpose of our government is to protect individual rights, but I want to know what does common good mean. I want to learn more about. Another effective way to help assess student learning is to use a rubric for setting objectives. For younger students, make sure to simplify the wording of the rubric. Here we have an example of a rubric for setting objectives. A number four states that a student understands and achieves the requirements of the learning objectives provided by the teacher guide. Providing feedback is an important instructional strategy. Feedback must be corrective and specific. Since you as the teacher guide will not be grading your child's assessments, Make sure to check your gradebook site for when your assessments have been graded by your teacher facilitator. Once the assessments are graded, make sure to read the teacher's comments to your child in the most timely way. 
use this corrective and specific feedback to help better understand your child's strengths and weaknesses. Explaining to your child what was correct and incorrect on assessments provides a positive influence on learning. If time is set aside to make sure students understand what they did well and what they did not know, through self-assessment, students can offer their own feedback. Students can score themselves using rubrics or summarizing progress on learning goals. Design question number two. What will I do as the teacher guide to help students effectively interact with new knowledge? Instructional strategy to be used. Non-linguistic representations, also known as graphic organizers. Here is an example of a graphic organizer called a story map. This can be used in your language arts lesson to help describe the characteristics of a particular concept. This example uses the concept of a snowflake and includes sensory characteristics such as smell, look, sound, and taste. Another graphic organizer example is the timeline graphic organizer. Here, you can choose an event and address the who, why, when, how, where, and significance of the event. Graphic organizers are used to organize declarative knowledge or information. Declarative knowledge can be organized into patterns that help students see different relationships and or connections among pieces of information. The six common patterns used are descriptions, time sequences, process, cause-effect relationships, episodes, generalizations, principles, and concepts. Design question number two continued. What will I do as the teacher guide to help students effectively interact with new knowledge? Instructional strategy to be used cues, questions, and advanced organizers. Several researchers indicate that learning increases when teachers focus their questions on content that is more important, not what they think will be most unusual or interesting to the student. Research by Redfield and Rousseau indicates that higher level questions that ask students to analyze information result in more learning than just asking students to recall information. For example, questions that require the student to analyze, synthesize, or evaluate result in enhanced learning. Another strategy is the wait time, or pause and prompt strategy. Did you know that waiting briefly before accepting responses from the student has the effect of increasing the student's answers? As teacher guide, you can use questioning before a learning experience begins to establish a mental set to help students process the learning experience. Questions that elicit inferences. With inferential questions, the teacher guide could ask questions such as, what action does this thing or person usually perform with regard to the category things and people? What effect does this action have on the taste, feel, sound, or look of this thing with regard to the category of actions? And what people are usually involved in this event with regard to the category of events. Advanced organizers are organizational frameworks teachers present to students prior to teaching new content. Skimming information before reading can be a powerful form of an advanced organizer. And an example of this would be to have your students skim maps to become familiar with patterns prior to reading the lesson or going to a planetarium. Design question number three. What will I do as the teacher guide to help students practice and deepen their understanding of this new knowledge? Instructional strategy to be used, homework and practice. Homework. Many children lament at the thought of doing homework, but homework provides many benefits to deepen their understanding of new knowledge. Homework should not be used as an afterthought to the school day, but a focused strategy to increase understanding. As the teacher guide, you should facilitate the homework process rather than helping your child do the homework. Use an assignment book to track students' daily homework assignments and give timely and specific feedback on homework to help improve student achievement. Practice. Did you know that students need about 20 practice sessions to ensure the new skill has been grasped? When learning a new skill or process, students should practice immediately and often and you as the teacher guide can help shape skills 
by pointing out errors. Design question number seven. What will I do as the teacher guide to recognize adherence and lack of adherence to classroom rules and procedures? Instructional strategy to be used, reinforcing effort and providing recognition. Reinforcing effort. Show your student the relationship between effort and achievement. Instill in them a belief that hard work and determination, called effort, will lead to success, which has the greatest effect on achievement. Share your own personal stories and examples of times when you succeeded because you continue to try even when the task was difficult. Here is a rubric for effort that you can use. This rubric is also adapted for younger children. On the right column, we see a score of four for younger children. This states that the student works on the task until it is finished and keeps working even when there is trouble and cannot first find an answer. The student uses problems as a chance to learn more. Providing recognition. Did you know that rewards can be a powerful motivator if they are contingent on obtaining a stated goal or standard? Make sure to establish a rationale for when you will give recognition as when your student has accomplished a particular task. Use praise as this is highly effective and is best used to provide recognition for specific elements of an accomplishment. Final thoughts. Movement is a powerful component of the brain-based classroom. Movement facilitates cognition. Physical activity forces oxygen and glucose to the brain at greater rates to feed the brain its needed nutrients. Cross-lateralization, that is crossing the midline, integrates and energizes the brain for better learning. Celebrate and congratulate. Our emotional brain needs to celebrate its successes when learning. Creative handshakes and a high five at a positive emotional response. I invite you to Carla's Brain Gym where you can watch me demonstrate a classroom warm-up and my most favorite activity, the multiplication Macarena. I encourage you to add movement daily into your brain-compatible classroom and wish you much success in incorporating the five research-based instructional strategies within Marzanum and Brown's Select Design Questions model. Thank you for watching and happy learning to all.